Today, we're gonna actually cut some chips. My guys were like, Titan, what type of chips are you gonna cut? You gonna cut aluminum? You gonna cut stainless? What are you gonna cut? No, we're going to the top. They said Inconel. I said, no, we're going even higher than Inconel. Monel, and not just Monel, it's Monel K500. This material is legendary. When you're making parts for SpaceX or Blue Origin or top oil and gas companies, it's probably this material that is causing you that grief. And we're gonna rough, we're gonna come and make some beautiful finishes. We're gonna drill small holes and big holes. And we're gonna see if they can handle it and what type of finishes we can actually make on the side. Let's go, baby, I'm excited. Synergy 735 over here, and we have the concentration at 11%. Right? So when you run Monel, it's hard stuff. So if you look at Inconel, everybody's scared of Inconel. Inconel is actually easier than Monel, and here's the reason. Because Inconel has a lot of nickel, so you're looking at like 57, 58% nickel. And nickel is hard, but it's like abrasive and gummy. So it actually wants to break your tool. But because the rest of it, so it's like 57, then you go another 20% chromium. Chromium's hard, so the mixture actually allows you to break a chip. Why Monel is different is Monel is like 63% nickel, 64% nickel, abrasive, gummy, hard material that likes to break tools, okay? But now you add in like close to 30% copper, which is also abrasive, kind of gummy, likes to break tools. So when you have the nickel and the copper, man, that is some tough stuff. And that's why when you go to top aerospace companies, some of the craziest parts they machine is because of the material, and Monel is top, top level. So the fact that the first thing that I'm personally gonna machine on the sile is Monel, that is a crazy, crazy thing. We are the distributors for Sile. If you want to get more information on the Sile machines after this video, or you want to purchase one, you can simply go to titansofcnc.com. On the top, you'll see Sile. You can go down there, request a quote, request information, all that. Machines like this are not supposed to be able to cut this. And, and I don't expect or want you guys to actually cut this material on this machine, but I just wanted to see if we could make chips and see if we could actually do it with the right speeds and feeds and the right tools and approach. If you look at Monel, a lot of people don't know it because it's cream of the crop. Like it's on the top level of machines. It's only the top 0.0001% of machinists will ever touch this material. So people that work for SpaceX or Blue Origin or some top level company that can afford the material, you know, and need it for some high temp job like rocket engines or something like that. When you see this tool, it does not want to cut this stuff because it doesn't have the hardness to break a chip. So this is this is normal. And the fact that we're cutting, look at the chips down here. You have a table full of Monel chips. That's saying something. This machine right here is 16 horsepower. A lot of the horsepower is up on the higher end. So we're, we got, RPMs lower and that's why I kind of went high on the surface wood on this tool so that we could actually get a little bit more free cutting and stuff but it's a hundred percent cutting right now man it's something else that's crazy programmed it pretty aggressive you know we added a 30 inches a minute but as a machinist you got to hear the sound and you got you got to kind of understand and feel the machine and see see where you're at so uh 18 inches a minute most people are cutting this at five inches a minute so 18 inches a minute is crazy good and uh it just sounds like the combination right now just sounds good it's cutting but it'll never sound like steel, it'll never sound like stainless or titanium. Like this is 
hard stuff to cut. We're 18 inches a minute, but if I if I drop it down, look at that. Listen, nine nine inches a minute, six inches a minute, three inches a minute. Now you hear the beep because the RPM's two feed rate is high, right? So as you start pushing it more, you'll get more sound to it. Take that uh, that abrasive. Uh, like I keep saying, like nickel doesn't want to break it. Like, you think of think about like maybe tar and it being hard, and it just you're trying to take a sharp cutting tool through it, and it just won't break. It just wants to break the tools. Nickel and copper sounds nasty. I mean, that's just the first tool and we got more tools coming but already you look at the style starts under thirty thousand dollars and we just cut monel k500 so it's not just monel which is 400 it's the hardened monel which is the k500 all crystallized crazy abrasive material so right now you can look at all of these chips and know that it can be done I'm not saying to do it, but it can be done. When you look at these Harvey 3s, they are crazy strong tools. It's been milling for a long time. And then you come over here and that tip, everything feels perfect. That just shows how strong the tool is. On to finishing, let's go. The difference right now is I was at 230 surface foot just on the high end because on this machine the horsepower and everything is kind of on the high end so when you're on the low end you just have to like think about all the fine details right there so uh, where I could have went more like 130 to 180 on the surface foot I actually went higher get a little bit more pre-cutting get some of that horsepower right there so I was at 230 surface foot uh, now I'm at 280 service foot because I just want more rotations per feed. We are at 280 service foot and then I slowed it down to 12.5. Just come in, kiss it, boom, make a nice surface finish. We have a lot of chips on this table and stuff and you can see like, you can see the synergy is so clear but it's just washing all the other chips out and then you see them over here. You got this container right here the container you can actually lift up and slide out but it's collecting the chips right here depending on what type of chips you have a lot of times like this will be fine but if you get real fine chips you might want to just put another layer to just filter out the fine particles and stuff but super clean So now we're drilling. This particular go drill has no coolant holes, so we're basically packing. All right, so I went with about a 30% pack on there. I just need that lubrication inside that hole as we're drilling it, because again, it's tough stuff. So the peck depth is about 30% of the diameter on this tool. Now 
Now one of the cool things that I love about this machine is the staging. So when you look in the program, we actually call up tool number three, and then on the G43 line, we put T4, and it not only does it get it ready, but it actually drops down and stages it right there. So you can actually see the tool right there, and that makes it super fast. When I look at the controls, I can see the magazine is at number four, so that's the next tool. If it was 12, if it was 14, you could put any number here and it would grab that tool. So tool four is next, we're on tool three. It gives me a visual right there on exactly where we're at and I absolutely love it. And then when we're done, the tool will come up and because it's already staged, it'll be like bang, super quick and that's why the tool changes are so quick. Ooh. Beautiful. All right, now we're going to the half inch drill. that half inch diameter is so beautiful there's a lot of beautiful things in this world We're coming and drilling monel absolutely perfect is stunningly beautiful You actually look at the chamfer that I have it's a four flute but it's only a four flute on the top half so it's at 45 degrees so like halfway up from the tip it's actually a four flute but down below it's like a two flute you know I want all four flutes in there so I'll actually adjust the diameter and how far off it is to use the greater area surface area around the top of the diameter which will actually give me a little bit of space when i'm doing it because it's only a quarter inch chamfer if you use the very tip like you do in aluminum or you say oh it's like a 0.1 diameter right where it's like 50 off 50 down and whatever you go beyond that is your chamfer depth we're calling it more like a 230 or a 220 so it's like close to the actual diameter so you're using the top part of the flutes, which is best in Monel. But now that I'm on the 0 0.173, the 173 thousandths uh, diameter holes, now I switched on the chamfer to the smaller diameter to fit it into it so I could keep it off of the material, drop down in center and move in, and then just arc right into the cut. Boom. but you only have a small diameter so now you have to switch it to the tip get in there everything like when you look around it you're not gonna see any like start or end lines because I just park into those cuts Everything is about arcing in, just, just making beautiful cuts, not leaving any tool lines, no start lines, no exit lines, nothing. Just make it flawless. Boom. Obsession for perfection. Let's go. Just the beginning we're going to continue to machine incredible parts crazy tolerances different materials we're going to give you the ingredients on all of it so you guys can duplicate the process in your own shops and i'm truly proud to put my name on this machine the machine cuts great it's affordable for machinists and now many machinists all over the country who have a dream of having their own shop they can afford a machine they can put it on their garage or grab a small space start their own companies we can increase manufacturing in america boom